Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and this is Rouse Rising. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to store your bulk foods by removing oxygen. This is gonna include vacuum sealing and we're also gonna be using oxygen absorbers today. Today we're gonna to go over all the details of how this is gonna extend the life of your bulk food. There are only certain foods that you wanna do for this, so stick around, I'm gonna tell you all about it. You wanna protect your foods from heat, light, oxygen, those pests, little bugs, and moisture. Those are the top five things that you are protecting your food from and you wanna take extra steps to make sure that those five things don't interfere with the quality of your food and your long-term food storage. I recently received my bulk food order from Azure Standard and I had a lot of items like beans and lentils, other things like wheat berries that I want to make sure that I am protecting so that they are going to stay nutritional for my family and pest free for the long term. I'm talking 5, 10, 25 years is how long you can store your food using this method. There are two ways that we can do it. We can use a vacuum sealer and today I am showing you how to use my food saver. This is the model game saver. However, any food saver is going to work any vacuum sealer is going to work to remove food from your containers. Today we are going to be using glass containers and glass offers many advantages and a few disadvantages. Glass is easy to clean and sterilize so that you can be sure that all of your food is stored in a nice, tidy and clean environment. Glass is moisture proof. It is oxygen proof. Glass is durable and reusable. You won't get any leaching or stinky smells invading your food from outside sources, as well as it's rodent proof. Mice and rats aren't gonna chew through glass to get to your food, so you know it's gonna be safe in there. Unless they knock it off the shelf and break it on the ground, your food is gonna be safe in your glass jars. These amber colored jars, which are more expensive, do offer a bit of protection from light. There's only certain foods that you wanna store in your jars. You wanna make sure that they are low oil or low moisture foods. You don't wanna be storing things long-term like nuts or seeds because those will go rancid. However, you can store nuts and seeds in vacuum sealed jars for up to three years. It just depends on how long you've had those seeds already, how long it was since they were harvested, that sort of thing. But anywhere from one to three years, you can store seeds and nuts in jars they are gonna go rancid eventually, but when you suck the oxygen out, it's gonna preserve them a little bit longer. I would not encourage you to buy seeds or nuts for long-term food storage. You don't wanna buy them for that. So don't go out and buy a 50 pound bag of pumpkin seeds unless you can eat all of those pumpkin seeds in the next one to three years from your oxygen free jars. Now the foods you do wanna focus on are dry beans, legumes, corn, camet, spelt, wheat, wheat berries specifically, not necessarily your flour because your flour is gonna degrade in quality sooner than your whole wheat berries. You can also do things like potato flakes, rolled oats, steel cut oats. Some people do sugar, although I don't advise that unless you want to remove a brick of sugar from your jar. That's gonna be challenging. There are a variety of foods that you can store in a vacuum sealed manner so that you have food stores in case you need them in the next 20 years. Whole grains are gonna store longer than any of your milled grains, so you wanna make sure that when you are purchasing food for long-term food storage, that you are focusing on the whole food and not something that has been through a process of milling or other type of food processes. You can vacuum seal your milled flour and it will make it last for up to a year. I know there's lots of people out there that use milled flour that's been in their cabinets for years and they're still producing cakes and things like that. However, the quality and the nutritional value does degrade fairly quickly from your milled flour. So you wanna make sure that you're removing oxygen from flour that you're gonna be storing for more than a month. This ensures that A, your flour won't be infested with bugs and B, that it's preser preserving the nutritional content for as long as possible. You probably don't want to buy a lot of bulk milled flour because it's not gonna last you a long time unless you're going through it and you're using it up. So you wanna be mindful when you're thinking about what foods that you're buying to store. You wanna make sure that you are buying foods that are 
storable for that length of time and that are going to maintain their nutritional value, that they're going to maintain their delicious flavor, and you don't want to interfere with that. There are two ways that you can take the oxygen out of your jars. You can put an oxygen absorber inside of your jar, and you can use a vacuum sealer to suck the air out of the jar. Both methods are going to ensure that your food stays free of oxygen, moisture, pests, all of that sort of thing. So it is a little bit overkill to put an oxygen absorber in your food jar. However, if the seal were ever to break while in storage, an oxygen absorber is going to reseal your jar and keep your food preserved until you can get to it. These need to be kept in an airtight container because they will absorb the oxygen from the air, they will become hard and brittle, and then you cannot use them anymore. So make sure when you're using your oxygen absorbers that you immediately place the remaining ones into an airtight jar or that you're vacuum sealing them closed again so that they are staying good so that you're preserving the quality of the oxygen absorbers. If you leave these laying out, they're going to suck up all the oxygen and they're not going to be any good to you. In addition to glass jars, you can store and vacuum seal oxygen absorb your food in a five gallon bucket with a gamma seal lid. You can also use the Mylar storage bags and you can use those with the oxygen absorbers in those bags. You can also vacuum seal those bags with your vacuum sealer. So there are different ways that you can do it. You just have to source what you can for your food preservation and use that method. Thankfully, in this modern age, we all have access to a variety of ways to store our food. So this is how I'm going to be storing these items today. I've got this bag of soup mix, and I would like to store this bag of mixed beans. This is a bag of mixed beans that I got for long-term food storage for my family. So I'm going to be storing them in these jars. I also purchased these oxygen absorbers to go into my gallon sized jars. Now you wanna keep in mind what size oxygen absorber you're gonna need for your jars. So for gallon size jars, you're gonna to wanna to use 300 cc size oxygen absorbers. You can use those for your quart jars as well. They are a little bit overkill. You can always use a bigger oxygen absorber in a smaller container, but I do not recommend using the 100 cc's, which is for a pint jar. I don't recommend using those for your gallon size jars. They are fine for your pints and your quarts, but not your gallon. You wanna bump it up to the 300 cc. And then for your larger containers, you're gonna need a much bigger oxygen absorber. These are for your five gallon buckets. So real quickly, I'm just gonna open up my oxygen absorbers and I'm gonna pull out the one that I need and I'm gonna stuff all the rest of these into this jar. You can reseal the bag. However, for this purpose today, I wanna be able to use these pretty quickly and access them in and out of this. So I'm gonna keep them in my jar and then I'm gonna pop that in there and as quickly as I can, I'm gonna fill this up. And you wanna work fast. definitely want to be working fast so that you can be sure that you are preserving your food well. Okay, so there are my beans. I'm going to put everything on nice and neat and straight. Then I'm going to place my lid on top. I am going to vacuum seal this with my oxygen absorber in there because I want to make sure that my oxygen absorber doesn't get used up before the seal breaks on this jar accidentally in storage. So I'm doing the oxygen absorber a favor by preserving it by removing as much oxygen as I can from the container. Okay, everything is sealed up. I've got my power on and I'm going to seal this jar. Okay, my jar is completely sealed. I remove this top piece, pop this off, and then I have a air locked secure jar of dried mixed beans and this can sit on my shelf for years and it's not going to decrease the quality of the food or nutrition that's inside because the oxygen has been removed. Now I do want to store this in a cool dark place to extend its life. You don't want to store this in a sunny window by any means. No, 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 do not do that. So we're going to store this in our pantry somewhere. And then we're going to place the remaining beans into this jar. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pop one of these uh, little oxygen absorbers into my jar. And then I'm going to fill it up with my beans. 
Now for reference, this five pound bag of Fiesta Medley beans fit in one gallon jar and one quart jar. So that worked out really well. I am just gonna place my lid on top of this jar and I am going to use my regular mouth attachment. This is my food saver vacuum sealer for my mason jars. I'm gonna place that on top and do the same thing to this jar. Okay, all the oxygen has been removed. I've got my oxygen absorber down there in the bottom. And once I remove this, this appliance, I've got my vacuum sealed jar of mixed beans. I have already done all of my lentils right here. These are all sealed. And you can store your vacuum sealed jars with the lids on. And I don't recommend stacking any weight on these jars because you do not want to break the seals. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to vacuum seal a bag of flour. The reason I am vacuum sealing this bag of flour is I want to have milled flour in case of a power grid outage. If the power grid goes out, if there's some reason that I don't have power and I'm not able to use my grain mill, I do not have a manual grain mill yet and I don't want to mill enough flour with my mortar and pestle for my family. I mean, I will. If worse comes to worse, you'll see me with my mortar and pestle milling flour with my wheat berries. However, that's worst case scenario. In the meantime, I want to make sure that I have flour that is preserved as best as I can for a little bit of a longer term. And by removing the oxygen from the container that the flower is in, we're gonna ensure that all of the bugs and the eggs and the larva and things that are hidden in that flower don't hatch and don't live or thrive because there's no oxygen in there for them to live off of. Wait, I'm gonna be storing this in a bucket as well with some other milled flour just to make sure that I have a variety of flowers. These are special bags and they have a grid-like pattern on one side and the other side is flat. The grid-like pattern that has a bit of texture, that is to allow the oxygen to move through the bag. So the first thing that I wanna do is seal one end of my bag. And I think I'm gonna do it with this end first because it seems a little bit easier for me to do that. Okay, I'm gonna double seal this, so I'm gonna put two seals on here. So we just lock it right there and I click the seal button. At this point, I'm not vacuuming any of the air out, I'm just creating a nice watertight, airtight seal on this end of my bag. That's done. Once all the air is sucked out, I'm gonna put another seal on that just to double seal it and be sure that it's good to go. Then on this end, and it doesn't matter which end you do or which end you start with, this is just how I'm doing it today. We want to make sure this is locked and then I'm going to hit the vacuum seal button. It's going to be kind of loud, so I'm going to adjust the volume in this video. And it's going to start sucking all the air out. It sucks until it can't suck any more air out and then it goes directly into the seal setting. This bag of flour is now hard as a brick, hard as a rock, and all of the oxygen is sucked out of it. So I'm gonna do a double seal on both ends just to ensure that that is good to go. You know, just in case one of the seals fails for whatever reason, we are gonna seal it up again on both sides. All right, I've got my flour sealed up. It is hard as a rock, and this is gonna keep it for one to three years. If there's a power outage, anything like that, I'm gonna have flour for my family. Right here, I have some potatoes that I wanna store, and I have already stored some in this jar, but I wanna go ahead and use these two boxes. These are freeze-dried potatoes, and I wanna make sure that I am storing these in a way that is gonna preserve them for the very long, long, long term. To here, I'm gonna put some oxygen absorbers. Now, I didn't put this one in the bottom, but that's okay, I'm just gonna stuff it down in here. Okay. I also wanna make sure I have the directions for these, so I'm stuffing those down in the side. These are potatoes. We're gonna put some lids on. 
You can actually use lids that have been used previously for this. As long as they're clean and sterile, you can use previously used lids. demonstrate how you can store any type of powdery food that you may have, how you can store that to make it last as long as possible in the jar if you're not going to be accessing it frequently. So here I have a coffee filter and what I'm going to do is just place this on top inside of my jar. Now you would want to use uh, an oxygen absorber in here um, to extend the life of it in case the lid pops off, but I am just going to put my coffee filter in the top here, and this is gonna keep any of the powders from getting sucked into the vacuum sealer. Then on top of that, I'm gonna put my lid to seal it. Then I'm gonna place my Food Saver jar sealer on top and connect the vacuum sealer and just hit power. Voila, sealed jar of flour. This will extend the shelf life of this at beyond a year. If you don't want to use glass jars, you also have the option of using Mylar storage bags, and you can order those online through Amazon. You can also order those from Azure Standard. I am going to be linking all of the tools that I used today in the video's description down below, so check that out if you think that you need any of these supplies. You can go ahead and go there and place your order. Also, if you want to order some bulk food, my favorite place for ordering bulk food is Azure Standard. Yes, they did recently have a fire at their main warehouse, at their main headquarters. However, they are still functioning. They are still delivering certain dry goods. A lot of their oils and honeys and things like that were destroyed in the fire. So at the moment, you cannot get those. But right now, you can get a, a variety of dry goods for your shelf-stable food storage. And I highly recommend picking up some food with predicted food shortages. You want to make sure that your house and your family is secure right now. I hope you all enjoyed seeing this little demonstration of oxygen absorbers and how to remove air from your jars to secure your long-term food storage. Remember, the things that you do not want to store in this matter are foods that have a bit of moisture and foods that contain oils. But this is a great option for your lentils, for your beans. It just works wonderfully. You can set these aside and not worry about rodents or anything getting to them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about securing and storing your food for long term, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm not the expert, but I'm just sharing with you what I have done today. I love watching other homestead channels. They give me lots of ideas for how to store my bulk food. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, bye.